In this video, we'll continue on with our point of sale system in JavaScript, and this is part five. So if you haven't watched the other video, please watch them first. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to work with the arrays here. Basically, what we're going to focus on is this specific section here. That when we select something, we should be able to have an array built in here. This is very important. This is probably the most complicated part because there will, it will consist of two parts. First of all, we have one with an array, which is basically the um, the machine or the engine, the memory that understands it, and then when we click on the item, it should delete it. And that part is basically the design part where we have the functionality. So what we're going to do first is working with the arrays and have this solid understanding on how this works. And this is really important to follow along because this took me a while to understand, but once you understand, it's quite easy to grasp. All right. Next, what I want to do is you see this length here this is absolutely horrible we're going to fix this as well first things first let's fix this part here this here is based on one of the items here if i'm not mistaken is the id order list there we are so in here what we want to do here is basically create a scrollable item and what i want to do is basically this here we want to make it scrollable but not from up and down here only in this specific diff or unordered list and that's what we're going to do but it will be only scrollable the moment we have a certain amount of items in here so let's look at this here basically i'm going to do this say here height i'm going to give the height here a uh, screen height so so the height is 50 percent of the screen itself all right so you can see we get now some weird responses here because now we need to make it scrollable. So now what we want to do here is as well, overflow um, Y, and the Y stands for vertical, and we do this on auto. So the moment we have something here overflowing, it should give us a scroll bar. But if we clear up, the scroll bar is gone, as you can see, and there we are. All right, so that is more than enough. So I'm going to copy this specific chunk of code, and let's put it in here. I'm sure that in Bootstrap you have this code as well, but I would say for now that's all right. I'll just leave it for this for now. So you can just copy it. I'm not mistaken that I think Overflow Auto is probably built in there in Bootstrap. And there's some more, but that's all right. Save this. Let's refresh here and click, click, click. All right, there we are. So nicely. So by the way, and this is important if you're going to make a point of sale system in or let's say, for example, in an iPad. So what, you, what I recommend you to click on this toggle device toolbar and you can see here all the options. Just select here, um, iPad or any type of tablet you want to make, select. You can see here and rotate it by 90 degrees. So it's a landscape shape. And this is exactly how it will look on your iPad. And this is what I used before, just to make sure how it will look on iPad and on a tablet. Because this is the screen for them if they won't use a computer right now i'm on a laptop or a macbook so we won't have a lab, a macbook in store but of course maybe you have an ipad or something like that a tablet. all right very important that's a side note all right what we're going to do now is basically this here to have an array in here we need to work with a few items and what we're really missing here is an id element and this id is not an id of the item but an id of what we have selected so that we later on can pinpoint to delete that specific ID. Very important because if you will have only these names, right now what we have is this. Let me look here. Um, basically here the arrays. This one here. If you only have this and you say, I would like to delete the item name here. But as you can see, we have now here probably two items of pizza tree. And imagine that one pizza would have extra cheese and the other does not. And it will search then by finding the first value with the matching name. And they, they, but this one has the extra cheese and this one did not. And maybe the person says, please delete the one without the extra cheese. But how JavaScript array works, when they search for a value, it will search for the very first value matching the, the, the name. And if that would be this one, it would delete this, even though you want to delete that one. Very important because this will be a big problem if you have your POS system. All right. So what we're going to do here is very simple. We're going to create a new constant. And this constant is called order ID array. Very straightforward. Nothing fancy in here. 
and this will do only one thing one thing at all so first of all we will say here a let value of i equals zero and all we want to do here is to push this specific value in there and the re reason why we do this is every time it will count up by a value of one or an increment of one so we say this here and then we have of course unique values of all of these here so let me show you so we're going to have this all right and then what we need to do here is we have to make sure that here at the bottom we can do it here at the bottom or you can do, do it just here below after the arrays we can say here i plus plus very simple to increment this. so we increment here increment the i and i stands for iteration an iteration means repeating yourself. So basically, we're going to increment a iteration here. All right, or a loop. We we'll keep on looping itself. So once we have this, we're not done yet because what happens now is we have this. We can do a console log here. Console log on the um, what is that? The item ID array, if I'm not mistaken. What is the name here? Or order ID array. So if I save this now, you will see why this is not, of course, what we want, or we're not done yet. So we have here this. You will see now here, oh, what is going on? I see here something is not responding as expected. All right. Let's look at this. Equals zero, and then we have the increment. All right. So we have this here. So why is it not responding here? Order this. Well, maybe we have to put it here somewhere down. Let's double check if this is really true. It's not expecting this, but let's double check again. All right. Plus plus. Or we can do here plus one. Is that the reason why am I thinking in PHP? No, definitely not. All right, I figure it out. That makes sense. Of course, the plus plus is fine here. Sorry about this. I'm going to move this back up. The reason why we have this is because we're in the same function. So what is happening is that it's always uh, resets itself to zero. So I'm going to move this out here. We don't want you to be reset every single time. All right, so we have this. So now yeah, I would expect this to work. There we are. So we have this here, but if we clear it up, it still has unique values. We need to clear up this entire item. And that's all right. And then we can reset it as well. But if we delete an item, we don't want it to change any counting. We just keep on counting it even with the missing item because these are just ID numbers. So there's no problem in that. All right. So we have this now here. So what are we going to do here in the cost item total item? Let's see here. In here, we have the, I'm going to put in here the order id array and then this will be set to uh, dot length we have to reset the length remember that equals zero and then we say i equals oh, sorry i equals zero as well and once we do this refresh let's double check here now uh, let me uh, clear up here all right and then select there we are you can see here Let's move this mobile version here. Just make it as big screen as possible. All right, there we are in clear. You can see here now we have everything working nicely. So this is one part, of course. We're not done yet here. What we need to do now, of course, is remove these items in here. And this is basically where we're going to use splice. With splice, you can remove a single item when we click on a certain item here. So I don't have any design here yet. So what I'm going to do is a very simple way right now. In the next video, I will fine tune that because that part is basically the design part. And this is the reason why the, the delete button was missing here. But that's all right. We're going to fine tune it later on because that's slightly complicated as well. So what we're going to do here is, uh, let's look here. I want to add up a function in here. And this function should be in here. So I need to figure out, all right, how do we include a function here? That's that's a good one as well. On click, basically we have to put in here an on click. All right, so I'm going to do that first. I'm going to just check here how we append a on click in here. All right, so 
I figure it out and this is it. So we're going to say order. Uh, what we're going to do is for now is I'm going to append it on this item here, just the list item. Later on, we're going to make a nice delete button. That will be next video. So we say here, and then we say set attributes, attributes. And what we want to do here is the following quotation. Then we say on click, comma, and then we say here the function name. So this function name can be anything. So let's uh, make sure this is a quotation. And then we say here, delete item. And in the delete item here, we also need the value. So the value will be the I. And I realize we put it in here, but it will be counteractive on this item here. So we're going to say here this and then plus plus because we're going to a concatenate we're going to put this i in here but i don't want this one to be here because it will be zero and then this will be counting up and then this will be the wrong value so this should be zero as well if the first one we selected so i'm going to cut this out to move it at the very end of this function save that and once we do that and we refresh let's look at our result open up the developer tab and we should see here now on this specific item we should see a on click as well there we are we see here the on click and here's on click one and two which is correct because if we would go here to our console log it shows here the same values length of three zero one and two all right so we have this now so then the moment we click on this you can see sorry we get an error of course we didn't uh, specify our uh, function yet so that's what we're going to do next so we're going to do it here below and later on we have to just see where we have to put it here and everything else that should match it as well we should have to check as well so we say here function because we need to later on remove that specific function as well or we have to clear clear the array from that specific element so let's say i want to remove this pizza here which is the id number of one as you can see here we can click on anything and then if we clear up we click again here just to be sure you can see again we have the same numbers but different items here now and then let's double check if this all works accordingly we should expect here again zero there we are let me go down here number six that is correct so everything works nicely we do get an error here and let's have to check what's the error here uh uncut delete items not defined all right that's the only thing that's no worries that's what we're going to do now so what are we going to do here so basically we need to get that specific value here so we have this array here oh, sorry specifically here this is the reason why i put it outside so that we can use it consistently in every other function or else we get a trouble later on so i'm going to grab this specific one so you just can get the order id array that's all right that's the one we need so i'm going to delete this let me say here uh, all right so what we need to do here is this is the order id array so we have here the value. So this will be the item. So let's say here is the ID uh, ID item or ID number or order ID. So that's our order ID. If we do now a console log, we should get the specific order ID out. Save that. Refresh. Select, select. All right. And if I click on this, order ID number two, which is correct. All right. So that means... This is working as expected. If I click on the other one, we should have the same results as well. So now what we need to do is here. Now we have to select that. We say, all right, we got this. Go in this array. We have to use, um, we're going to look for this value and we call index of. And the fun part now is because we it's exactly the same item, same value, then then the index of will be same. However, you can do anything you want with it. It doesn't matter so much. You can do all kind of options. So, uh, but for us, the index of, we don't look for the value with index of. So we say here, um, we have, let me show you. We say index of, meaning that we're going to get the index number of this item. Well, if we select on this item number two, that is also index number two in this case so it's exactly the same but i will be just to be sure maybe you have different numbering in ids could be completely different with different id numbers etc etc 
All right, so we get the index of, but this index of must be extracted from our array that we're going to work with. That's the order ID array, I guess. But that's the one I wanted to, to copy. So we say, oh, in here we get the index of. So if we do this now, let's give this a const. Uh, I will call the uh, or in index num. I'll just give it this, but later on I'm going to remove that. My goal here is just to give you a visual representation of what we're doing. So I select this, select this. All right, then I select number four pizza. This one here, index of one one. This two two. All right. So this is correct. So now you you probably if you're familiar with splice, you probably know what we're going to do. We're going to look for in the splice. We're going to cut out that specific item in the array. Now the reason I'm using splice is I want to modify the exactly same array. Yes, if you use slice, you're going to cut out, but you're going to create a new array. And you don't want that because if not, then you will create a double array, and you have the original array has still the value that you want to remove. So splice. Yes, let me type that splice. Edits of, of removes or ma manipulates. That's the official word. Manipulates the original array. Yeah, right. So original array. If we're talking about slice, you will create new. It will clone plus edit the clone array. Very important. All right. These these differences are key. You will if not, you have a big problem here. All right. So what we're going to do now is this. So we're going to say here. Where are we going to slice it? Well, first of all, we're going to slice this. So let me show you how slice, oh, sorry, not slice, splice with a P. So we first of all, we're going to splice here. Splice consists of two values here, which is the value where, it's, where we start, that's the position, yes, and how many items we want. So we have the index number, but first of all, will be the index number. Guess what? We already got the index number here. You can copy this. Or you can just copy this one, one or the other. All right. So in this case, we just have this one. I guess we can leave this one here. Next one, what we want to do, splice, is we're going to remove the uh, how many values or items or elements are we going to remove? Only one item that we selected. Ah, huh? all right. Very important here. So if you want to cut the code, you can just copy this. You just put it in here, or you do it like this, one or the other. All right, so we have the index of here. This is going to delete. We have this here now. So we should splice this. And the moment we splice this, if we do this, our new array should be cleaned out, removing the single item there. All right, so if I save this, refresh, let's check here. All right, now I'm going to select this. There we are. That's what we need. So we have this now, but of course, what can you see here? This is still not being counted, of course. So what we need to do here is to look how are we going to adjust this. So we have these here, these total items or these functions here, which will start to recalculate again. And I guess we can just use this here, put it down here. We say, all right, once you did this, I would like you to go back. I'm going to remove all these access console logs. Once you did this, please go back here and recalculate everything so save that refresh let's see if this works delete this oh what is going on here for some reason the click is not responding all right uh do we have an error no no error is here so i'm going to check here did i delete something unintentionally no all right we have this here the order item and this one. So why are we not responding as expected? So let me go back here. Maybe I deleted something. I'm going to save this. Oh, of course, sorry. I realize you don't see it, of course, here right now because the array is here, although I expect that the, the value should match. I remove that, delete. Doesn't respond at all. Am I missing anything? Maybe just to be sure here. 
delete item one out. Fair enough. What I'm going to do here is just to double check again my console log, just to see if we have our order ID correct. And probably here, of course, we didn't have any order ID here in, so we have to work on that one as well. So we will understand the match. So if we delete this console log, all right, oh, it works there. Try again. There we are. So this works. So the moment we say we please recalculate, it cannot recalculate. And the reason why it doesn't recalculate, it doesn't delete it. All right. So what we can do is to, to make this work, make sense, of course, we don't have to adjust this here. What we need to adjust this, just in here, we do the same one, but now, and this is the nice thing here. We already have the index number. And remember, everything is consistent. So the price and item array is always consistent with that. So all what we need now is here, basically the same item. So we say now, instead of order array only, we want to get this, the order array and the item array. And I guess this one here might be, I will just check, maybe eventually we can remove this. We have to see on that one. Or, may, or we probably cannot remove it, I realize, because we have this here. So we have to check on that. Or maybe we have to change that with, a different structure. All right. So what I'm going to do now is all right. I'm going to clear out this. I just put it down here just to make sure that this works. So we have all of this here. Um, what I need to do here is I'm going to copy this. If the index of oh we don't have to copy that one, but we can copy this, and that one should be still duplicated twice more. But now we have the index number that's still same because they're all identical except here. This will be the order item array and this will be the order price array. All right, so if I save this now and match this here, we should have an expected calculation or it should recalculate. Select, there we are. As you can see, it recalculates, but of course, visually it doesn't represent itself yet. We select this, we have Three items, that is correct. Let's clear this all. Do this again, Now I'm going to select here. I want to remove pizza number four. There we are, pizza number four has been removed. Let's remove pizza number uh, four again, but the first one. There you are, we only have one and two, and one and two together makes almost $11. All right, so we have two items that works nicely. So we have basically now created the system here. I realize only one thing, and this is what I'm going to warn you right now, is I think that this will be a problem later on, because we have here the item price and the numbers. I think here we should have an item image array as well. So what I want to do is to ensure this, and later on we should just put in some demo images, just to make sure that it works. Because right now I have only one basic default image, and we're not able to see if this is working correctly. All right, so I'm going to do this one here. Just going to say here uh, order. It should be order image, and basically I don't know why I didn't adjust this correctly before, but now to adjust it, that will probably be a big problem. So I will leave that now. But this should be camel case. This is not camel case here. Very bad practice. JavaScript camel casing. All right, got this here. Uh, what I want to do here then is the following. I'm going to put in here as well, the order array, and then we have here the order image array. And then of course we do this, what we need to do here then, order image array should be also matched in here. So we have the order price array, I'm going to get that one, it will be the order image array to reset everything. So order price, all right, everything else is fine. So if I do this now, we probably have here, oh, Order image array is not defined, sorry. Of course, why is it not defined? Answer is here above. So we have the order, I'm just going to grab this one, just put it between there. Order, image, all right. All right, so if I save this now, this should be defined. Of course, you don't see it yet, but there we are. So we have the back, or basically the back end, or I would say the interactive part of JavaScript working, but visually it's not showing. Next video, I'm going to focus on the visual representation. We're going to create a nice delete button here because I don't want you to click on this. Maybe you click on it on a unknowingly or, you know, the cashier is pressing something without knowing specifically pressing on the delete button would be 
more better and this moves here then so we have to do some adjustments here which is correct because this was not even appealing all right that will be in the next video